Hi and welcome to Chinny Vision. This time, some re-education CPC style. People say to me, Chinny, why do you love the Amstrad CPC so much when there's no original titles on the system? Why do you just have a C64 instead? Well, I actually own all the systems, as regular viewers will know. It's just I had an Amstrad CPC back in the 1980s, and I loved it. So with that in mind, I'm going to show four games that are exclusive to the Amstrad CPC on the 8 bits. And we're starting off with what was certainly the last proper Amstrad CPC commercial game. The rest of them were, I guess, homebrew and weren't available in the shops, although people reported this one was very difficult to get hold of. It's Prehistoric 2. Now, it's not an Amstrad CPC exclusive title, but it is exclusive to the CPC for the 8 bits. There's no Commodore 64 version. There's no Spectrum version. This came out in 1993. There's three versions of the game, a 64K version of the game, 128K version of the game, and an Amstrad Plus version of the game. They all came on the same disc, and you had to select which version you wanted. The 64K game lacks a status screen and a few other bits and pieces. The 128K version has everything, and then the Amstrad Plus has enhanced graphics as well. Because I don't have an Amstrad Plus, we're playing this on my 6128. Slightly garish title screen. And we don't have the DMA support on the 6128, so we don't have the sample music as is mentioned on the screen there. This is a nice overscan screen here, if anyone's noticed. It's a 32K screen, taking up half of a the memory of a 464, but it's um, overscanning. It's a shame some of the colours weren't better chosen. On the Plus, and I'm going to flash up the Plus versions via emulation from time to time, just so you can see the conversion. In fact, let's do that now. This is the Plus version, and you can hear the sampled music on there, so that's really, really polished. You've got an Amstrad Plus, and all this came on the same disc, so the versions are backwards compatible for whichever Amstrad you had a 464 with a disc driver, 664, 6128, or an Amstrad Plus. You could play this game, and it would take advantage of whatever features you had. Please start to your caveman, and you've got to collect the various things through the levels. Copyright 1993 Titus Software. This is, of course, a French game, a market where the CPC was strongest for many, many years, and hence got conversions of games like this. And I apologise during the scrolling here that the picture's going a little bit distorted. That's because Prehistoric 2 uses lots of fancy hardware tricks and it's playing up my capture. It doesn't do this on a normal Amstrad monitor and most LCD or other TVs. It's just on the capture here, it's playing up. So it doesn't do that on the real version. So there you go, it just did it there, it just dimmed down slightly. And there's lots and lots of hardware tricks going on here to make all this happen. In fact, there's actually different versions of the game you can select on loading because on some Amstrads, due to the CRTC chips used, the scrolling can play up, so you, you can turn off various features to make sure it works with your Amstrad. This is all because the game's programmer, Elmer Krieger, I think is how you pronounce it, was actually a demo programmer originally, and he's thrown in all these demo techniques to improve the game. But of course, as we know, demo techniques, they don't work on all systems. And there you go, there's a scrolling message going through the background demo style there. Oh, sometimes it's often going so fast you can't read them. Bullet music plays it throughout. It's a shame the music resets every time you go to a new zone. And that can be irritating sometimes when you just go into a very small zone in the game. The music resets and you come out of it again, it resets and that can be quite repetitive. More scrolling there. On the CPC Plus, you have enhanced graphics and also these palm trees that go in front of your character and scenery that are, well, let's face it, stolen from Sonic the Hedgehog. There they are from the Green Hill Zone, let's face it. They're nice, although they sometimes appear and disappear. And there's one, here's one of the problems with this game. In order to maintain backwards compatibility, even on the Plus machines, it's not using the sprite hardware on those machines. 
So what happens, even on the pluses, when you get a lot of sprites going on at once on the screen, the game massively slows down. So, and you can see that here, there's all those fruit pickups there are sprites. You've got the spider and it's massively slowing down. It, it's gone down to a crawl. But on the other hand, there's never any sprite flicker in this game. It's all done very, very cleverly. It, it's a really, really polished game. So I'm looking at more than one game here, so that's a very quick review of Prehistoric 2. And we're moving on to Sorcery Plus. Sorcery came out, of course, on all the 8 bits of Spectrum Commodore on the Amstrad. But Amsoft said to Virgin, hey, could you produce us an enhanced disc-only version for the CPC of Sorcery? So they did. And there's no tape version of this. It runs on 64K and 128K Amstrads. The game was later ported to the ST and Amiga, where it's pretty rubbish. So in terms of 8 bits, again, it's a CPC exclusive title. There are, as I say, the ST and Amiga versions. They're not worth worrying about. You are the wizard there. And you've got to rescue your wizard mates, who are, I think there's eight of them, who are trapped throughout the levels. And we're just going to get one of them here, so I'm not going to explore all the screens. This is a game I will review in full one day, but it dates from 1985. And look at the graphics here. They're absolutely lovely. And every screen you go to, the disk drive accesses, and it's loading the data from disk. There's no memory constraints. So there's the wizard, top right-hand side of the screen there. I've got to rescue him and find the object that releases him. Various pickups, different things kill different baddies as you go on, the shooting stars kills everything, the ball and chain kills the eyeballs and the the wolf type enemies. Right, that's Spellbook there, I can't get through there, but that Spellbook will release that wizard, I'm pretty sure. So I've got to get through that entrance there. And there's another one down there, actually, on the bottom left-hand side, but I can't get at him at the moment. The, the game's absolutely massive, and there's loads of screens. And the thing is, so far the plot is the same as Sorcery, the original Sorcery. When you've rescued all the wizards, you go on to the plus part of the game, which I can't show here, which is a whole new set of about 30 screens that you have to complete. So it's a considerably enhanced game. Right, can I get through that? Yes, right. Now, this is difficult. In sorcery, you've got a time limit. You've got energy, but you've only got one life. So, I've dropped in the water. I'm dead. Got to get this exactly right. Right, up there. Got it. Got the spell book. Again, just got to get this. Got to get this right. All right, there we go. Right, so I've just forwarded on here. Now, I'm going to go rescue the wizard. So there's a funny effect when you pass behind objects. Right, released him. Oh, bottom. <laughs> right, well, I've ended up in the water and died. <laughs> Just as I rescued a wizard. Sorcery Plus is a brilliant Amstrad exclusive title. It's far, far better than the Commodore 64 and Spectrum, and even the original Amstrad versions of Sorcery. It's so much more polished. It looks really good, and it's a game that's forgotten about. People think Amsoft put out lots of cheaply produced and rubbish games. They also put out stuff like Sorcery on the Amsoft Gold label, and it's a really, really good game. We now move on to 2008, and this is Star Saber, and it's a shoot 'em up Now, the CPC's got plenty of shoot 'em ups but not many that run at 25 frames a second. You heard me right, it's running at 25 frames a second. Okay, Commodore owners are already sneering at that. But still, for the Amstrad, that's pretty impressive. Nice loading screen. Looks even better on a CPC monitor when all the colours have slightly blended into each other. There is a 64K version of the game as well. It's pretty much identical, except it doesn't have the music. And the music does add so much to the game. I said it was 2008, it's 2009, so apologies for that. Nice presentation on the menu screen. Look at all these lovely colours. Lovely use of the CPC's palette just there on the gradients on that high score table. 
off we go stage one that's a nice that's going into the screen border zone there so it's over scan and off we go now you'll notice there's a the game is only filling up the middle portion of the screen there's quite a big black bar at the top and bottom i assume that's to facilitate this lovely scrolling the sprites are quite small but they move so well and the music adds so much atmosphere to the game there's power-ups to power up your spacecraft and we'll see some of those shortly That's a bonus there. Right, now I've got rockets that launch down. I, I have so mixed feelings about Star Saber because it's a really good game. I don't think it's a game I would have been willing to pay full price for originally, but at a budget game, you'd be going wow at this. And that's only because it's a shoot 'em up. It's fairly. Well, it's the same kind of gameplay as a game like Kronos, really, except it's got power ups and much better presentation. It, it is really good, don't get me wrong. I just. Perhaps don't think it's worth 15 quid of your money as it would have been back in the day. It's so balanced that it plays really well. It's so balanced. And these big end of level baddies that you get. It's a really, really good game that shows off what the CPC could do with just a little bit of programming effort. A really good game. Speaking of smooth scrolling, here's another game I thought we'd look at. And this was a budget game Killer Cobra by Peter Wiseman. Who, when you look him up, he um, doesn't show up as programming many other games other than a couple of budget games. And look at this. This is wonderful. And it turns out Peter Wiseman is a pseudonym for Richard Alpin, who programmed lots of Amstrad games, including Fly Spy and Final Fight. So why he did it under a pseudonym, I, I don't know. But um, this was a one ninety nine budget game from Mastertronic. And, well, you'll see why it impressed me. And it's also CPC exclusive as well. Here we go. And yet it's a scramble clone. But look at the scrolling. And this is 1987 on budget. Again, Commodore 64 owners are saying, so what? But this is a CPC exclusive game. It's incredibly limited. It's a 199 game at the end of the day. You can't really complain about it too much. But it plays really well. And it's one of those games where you look at it and think, Wow, why couldn't more people have programmed their games like this? It moves really smoothly. The, the, the helicopter sprite there's giving a little bit of trouble to my deinterlacer. De as you can see, like I have with some common... Oh, I've crashed. Lovely spinning animation as you crash. We're on to level two. Section two, rather. And it quickly becomes apparent the game is incredibly repetitive. It's all about flying from left to right and shooting the things on the ground. And, and that's about it. But for $1.99 for a CPC exclusive title, yeah, it's pretty good. So that's a quick look at four exclusive or 8-bit exclusive Amstrad CPC games. There are, in fact, lots, lots more. And I will cover some of these games again fully one day. But I just wanted to show what the CPC could do. And I didn't want to pick all the obvious games like Get Dexter. I just wanted to quickly pick out four Amstrad CPC games just to show you guys, hey, here's some games on the Amstrad. Give them a go. See what you think. These are You can't play these on other systems or other 8-bit systems, rather. We can play Sorcery, but it's not very good. So give the CPC a chance. It's got some good conversions of games available for other systems, of course. But on this video, I've tried to show four games that I think you'll all enjoy on the Amstrad CPC.